Hello and welcome back to Trade Empires Silk Road with me, Bijingo. And uh, we joined us last. I think I thought we'd reached the end of this mission, but um, it turns out uh, there's, there's yet another commodity to deal with, uh, and that is lacquer, lacquerware, which is something that um, the East can provide the West, because there was an awful there was, an, there was a trade imbalance between what. Um, the West was, was providing ivory and marble statuettes and incense and amethysts and uh, the West was kind of, the East was kind of stuck providing silks and later medicine. But uh, a new new commodity to bring in and there's probably something we can bring in from the West that these place, places will like. Hmm, I'm thinking possibly glass? Oh. Huh. Negan no longer suffers from an outbreak. Good for them. Well, not good for me. I'm probably selling them uh, medicinal goods. Anyway, that's going quite quite quickly back into business. I, well, I need to finish with the uh, introductory prose of this video. I uh, hope everybody's doing all right. It's uh, Sunday evening and uh, quite rainy, quite dark outside. I feel like I've been cheated because the clocks have gone forward and it's dark. So that extra daylight that had been promised never materialised. Still, having said that, I'd have never noticed if the uh, clocks were going forward because everything is done automatically. And of course, I don't really watch much TV or read any newspapers where you usually find out this information. Um, and as I say, the phone, my phone and the PC would have automatically updated. And I guess the only time I would have noticed would probably have been mid-morning when I went to look at my watch. I'm going, huh, that's an hour out. So just, uh, look at that, I'm just making money just by talking here. I'm like a Twitch streamer. Oh, that'd be a life, just to be able to sort of just, just, just talk and people throw money at you. I think. I was, I'm always constantly of the, of the view. I think I read this today. In the, they say in the Adventures of Huckleberry Finn or some, something like that. Um, Mark Twain mentions how people will do anything for a hobby, but as soon as you pay them, <laughs> their enthusiasm dries up. Um, I can't but feel that something similar would happen there. Anyway, that's enough dilly dallying. We've got to look at varnished trees. Ugh, I don't want. Is that the, yeah, that's the same one that provides all the luxuries to uh, the Tarim Basin. And I think they got mugged last time. Not this time, though. Uh, what's it called? Lulan is getting their luxuries. Anyway, I need to go back to Chang'an. I was looking at varnished trees and timber camps and seeing if there's any next to each other. Yes, actually. If I was to upgrade... Western Chanang twice. Where's money just flowing in? It's uh, getting a little irritating now. It keeps on breaking up the flow. What about in Jade Gates? Varnish trees, timber camp. Yes. Actually. That's not bad. We'll have a look at that. I don't know the um, proportions, and I guess I, I won't know until I buy that lacquer maker. Or wait like 30 years until he, if, he finds out lacquer making through word of mouth, I guess. Are you sure I can't fit a trading post in there? Nope. That's, yes, again. Um, forced to have spend an extra 200 coins. Which, given that I have nearly 300,000, might seem a little bit cheap. But uh, that's me. So I'll take that. Oh, it's one and one. So that's not too bad. Now, what I want to do with this lacquerware? Who demands it? Um, temples, sort of. Palaces, sort of. Huh. Well, it's not great, is it? Um, what's the demand like in Chan'ang for ivory marble statuettes? 
Uh, middling. In fact, what do these people demand? More golden amethyst jewelry. Golden amethyst and golden ruby jewelry wouldn't go amiss. They'll take ivory statuettes and marble statuary. Yes, so what I'm going to do is I will take lacquerware from the Jade Gate, take it to Antioch, because that's where you get points for it. Ostensibly. And then come back with one marble, one ivory, one golden ruby, one amethyst, and take it all to Jing Ji. And that should be reasonably profitable. And then I'll, I'll set up another one that goes, that takes lacquerware to somewhere else. I don't know. Samarkand, probably. And do something similar. Come back with all four. Anyway, let's talk more doing. I, I, I thought this might be quite a quick video. Um, but then again, there are still 180 years to go. And you know how quickly I do these kind of things? Going on half speed is... Well, it feels like it's going a bit quick for me, actually. So I want to start... At, let's have new... Lacquer... Antioch. I didn't even know there was a blight in Chanang. Oh well. It might explain why these far these cities are struggling a bit. Didn't even notice, because in this scenario, who cares? It's all about the luxuries. Right, what's this place called? Ganzu Valley, wasn't it? Ganzu Valley on a wheel tray. Pick up four lacquerware. Go directly to Antioch. Or I think we should be able to dump one here, two here. Get off. Hands off me incense. Yeah, that'll be fine. Oh, there we go. So go straight to a G. Eastern a G. And Antioch. And then... There shouldn't be any reason why we can't pick all of these up here. Now why does L have to be so far down in the alphabet? It's an old joke. I'm making it even older. But I'm not going to stop. Now. That's got plenty of marble so if you go to southern Beroia pick up one marble go to regular Beroia marble and whatever that is amethyst isn't it An amethyst then go to Issus One of those, one of M. It's further down than that. Marble statuary. Then go to Southwestern Apnea. This is not very efficient, in in any respect. Still needs to be done. So it's one of those. One of those an ivory statuette. I'm looking at the wrong market. Whew, that could have been embarrassing. And then go to somewhere that does ruby. I don't know. I mean, perhaps we could do it in the Turin Basin. 
Couldn't get the rubies, not so much in the way of gold though. Also, some, some Arcans on the way. And they've got plenty of rubies to spare. So then we go to the Oxus River. There is no quick way to just sort of say and keep everything on. I think Railroad Tycoon does something like that, where it just, it's like, save everything from the last stop. Which make this an awful, um, lot less tooth-pullingly tedious. Well, it, it, it might be. I seem to be having a fairly good time playing it. I can't vouch for your, um, how much you're enjoying watching it, but, uh, yeah, people seem to keep coming back. So I, I carry on playing, I guess. And, uh, learning everything. Oh, yeah, and, um, I've even been getting feedback, and you know what me and feedback, I, I always like it. So, um, I will, after this, run a scenario nice and quick. I might do Middle Eastern Civilizations, or what's it, Ancient Civilizations 2. That has four um, computer players, well, four families on. And so it'll be me versus three AI. And we'll just see how we get on. I don't think it'll go particularly well. <laughs> I don't think it'll go particularly badly, but I, I can just see it being really quite frustrating. But uh, you never know. It might be um, a barrel of laughs and fun for all the family. So uh, I'll look to that. And uh, I think that's it, really. When the... Ivory statuettes, golden amethysts, marble statuary. Great. Now, load yourself up full of stuff. And I think you should be all right just going to the Jade Gates. So I won't tell you to guard up. Although I've already forgotten what that route's called. Hmm. Get off. Okay. So, potentially we can do something else from Jade Gates, going from Ganzu Valley. And I don't know. We don't necessarily have to go for Ganzu Valley. We could quite easily pick up some lacquer here. Take it down here and turn it into lacquerware. Because it's one for one, there's not much loss in transport. Um, so we could do Lacquerware Local and take it to all of these and Lacquerware to, I don't know. There's nothing stopping me from providing ooh, these places the luxuries. It won't give me points, but it's money, isn't it? But I'm also quite conscious that I've, I'm getting through my merchants quite quickly. Ooh, very nice. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. Wow! And that's just a local route. Twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six. I've got four more merchants left. I'm going to make them count. To that end, let's just wait and see. Okay, I'm bored of waiting and letting, waiting, letting see. Let's go from Ganzu Valley. And have this uh, lacquer... Lacquer local. Uh, Ganzu Valley on the Knox cart. Take a whole bunch of lacquerware. Theory being... I'll be able to sell two at each of these places. Well, two, three. Ooh, it's an academy. Well, that's rubbish. So I've got, got to make sure I don't get carried away by the academies. They look awful. Although there is one at Suzhou as well. Uh, 
Make sure to unpause it. Slow the game speed down a bit. There we go. Um, the events that... I don't remember that happening. I mean, it was only yesterday when I did this recording. I don't remember these events happening. Oh, well. Well, you know what would be grand if you could... Uh, if, it, if I'd like voice recognise, I'd be like, go to Zuzio. And it would just not have to bother with lists and everything like that. Having said that, given how well I'm pronouncing everything so far, <laughs> it might just be easier just to carry on doing uh, the lists. Although, as far as I know, I seem to, I seem to do all right with uh, voice recognition software these days. Uh, back when uh, I was younger, and it was still in its relative in infancy, it used to have trouble with how I speak, and, uh, you know usually developed by some American company. Wasn't quite familiar with the North Derbyshire accent, and uh, who can blame them, because very few people are. <laughs> Clearly a lot of people in North Derbyshire. Um, but I don't think I have much of an accent, but ever since I moved away, it's quite conscious of, uh, I don't know. Everyone else seems to have an accent apart, apart from me. I think everybody else has a problem. I don't know. Hmm, would you look at that? There's actually not enough lacquerware to go around. So if you go to Jinji, and there's also Northwest Chanang and Western Chanang. Oh, here we go. Uh, coloured glass, sorry, glass of colour is demanded by the following structures, palace and temple. That's a relief, because when I saw dye turning up, that usually means that cotton cloth and the rest is no longer demanded by dwellings. I might have to double check on that. Mm. Marketeering, thank you. Uh, North Western Chan'ang. And Western Channing. Yeah, we're running out of lacquerware. So, what I was, what I was going to do is once they go to Zhuzhou to go back to Gansu Valley. But I should have thought of that. That'll involve changing all these markets around. And I just, yeah, can't be bothered. Guanai is suffering from a sudden outbreak of influenza. I don't think Guanai has anybody living there. Well, if there is, I don't want them living there. Okay, so forget those. Just carry on, just carry on as is. Hmm, not bad, it's taken them a while though. Oh, I didn't put, um, again, didn't put guards on. Oh, that, uh, that could have been nasty. I see no reason not to fully stock them with soldiers. Get off. Oh, you can, ha you can have the cinnamon. I'm not too fussed about that. And we'll take uh, Tofu. He can go... Sorry, Tofu. Although, really? <laughs> Animal husbandry, I think. Although, he does a lot of travelling... Oh, come on. What, what's the likelihood they'll, he'll need to flee? I'd rather he goes a bit quicker. Just lack a cell for. Mm, two to eight probably sells for four, five, six. It's not too bad. It's not the biggest thing in the world. 
Southern Atmere have ended. I didn't know they were on strike. Oh well. <laughs> it didn't feel like they were on strike anyway. Okay, so let's take a look back to Antioch. Aha! This looks ideal. Or would be... There. Western Hierapolis. You've got a glass maker. You've got a dye maker. You've got dye. You've got sand. That just makes coloured glass. Um, glass of colour. Which sells for... 491? Not bad. That's certainly better than regular glass, which was like 200 or so. Well worth waiting for. So, let's get... Antioch Glass Local. Now, I want to leave the game running, but there's not a great deal of time left. And I want to get this set up. Uh. All right. I did it again. <laughs> I would have written down, like, on the screen, stuff like guards and caravanserai. And, like, a post-it note on the top of my monitor. In fact, there's no notes on my monitor at the moment. No wonder I'm forgetting so much stuff. So let's try it again. On a wheel... No. That's too slow. On a wheel dray, pick up all the coloured glass and go to... AG... You may as well go to AG, Antioch and Eastern AG. I don't think you'd lose too much in the way of time. Also, what's the demand like for Glass of Colour? Temples like them, finally. Makes more sense. Palace like them. There's lots of, lots of demand. That's great. Let's get a new merchant on the job who does a bit of price gouging. You need to go first to guard up. We also need to check on your progress. Good. Now go to Antioch Glass Local. And then a new route for Antioch Glass. Shame. Good. And it was Western Hierapolis. I should remember that. I've only just worked with the place. On a wheel dray, pick up four coloured glass, glass of colour, and take it to Lingzhou. Um, Jinji and the other ones. So Western Chanang and Southwestern Chanang. Well, Northwestern, that wasn't far off. Fine, and because that would be a wasted journey if they didn't then do something on the return, go to the Jade Gates, go to Gansu Valley. Get some more lacquerware. And, uh, I don't know. Do you do your stuff. Antioch. AG, Eastern AG. Ba, 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 ba. 
God, look at all this demand for high value goods, and here's me trying to create demand for, well, trying to supply what is really quite low value in the grand, grand scheme of things. I mean, even bronze handlers are worth more than lacquerware. In fact, the price is very low because I'm not letting demand build up. My theory, theory being that by the time they actually get round to traversing the um, Silk Road, the uh, demand will have built up sufficiently. Uh, definitely worth a reasonable price. Where is Lacquerware? 334, not bad. Uh, now, new merchant who's got an honest reputation. Why on earth have they got military kickbacks? It's... I mean, if, they get, if, they, if weapons come in now with 130 years to, to spare, I'm, I'm just not doing it. I'm not doing it. Screw you, game. <laughs> Alright, make sure you've got an honest reputation, but that's no need to be naive, so we need you to go and guard up. Also, get yourself a decent transporter. Lovely. And then go to... What was it? Antioch Glass China. And well, that leaves me with one merchant left. I don't know what to do with them. I mean, there's medicine to be provided. Cinnamon local? Have I got a cinnamon local? I haven't actually. Well, what about... Well, what's the cinnamon production like? I don't know why I'm focused on cinnamon. I guess it's just something, isn't it? Antioch Ivory Export Path, not bad. Again, once in the military kickbacks. I, I, I don't know. Oh, here's one, what's worth more, medicine or cinnamon? Uh... Well, that's an interesting one because palaces don't aren't particularly interested in medicine. And... Um, hmm. Well, that's fine. I can find four people. I can find four temples to sell cinnamon to. And then I could sell medicine to the four temples on this route. Yes. Let's do that. But first, I need to find... A good place to. There's no medicinal plants there. Uh, cinnamon farms everywhere. What about in Jade Gates? Well, there's a couple of cinnamon farms that aren't doing anything. I'll just use those. And yeah, there's loads of medicines stuck there. Okay. So we'll call it Cinnamon Medicine Local, because it is. That's Eastern Wu Wei. On a wheeled tray, take four cinnamon and take them to all of the palaces. No, all of the temples. Which are the same colour as gold mines. Actually, no, gold gold mines are a uh, slightly duller yellow. So it's Zuzhou, Jing, Jiahuan. Uh, 
Oh, a filter would be nice here. <laughs> it's keep, I keep saying it, and I guess the more I say it... So why am I bothering going elsewhere with that? Take two to Zuzio. And two to Jihuan. Go back to Eastern Huawei. Which is what I call the make of my phone. Uh, Huawei. Put an, extra, put an extra, extra H in there for good measure. Uh, four more. Then go to... Jan Ang. Ah, here's something. Lingzhou and Northwestern Chang'an probably have satiated demand because. Actually, no. No, because the cinnamon's going out, but there's no cinnamon coming in. What am I talking about? I don't know. Comment below if you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> there you go, there's your call to action. So you go there and you go to Northwestern Chang'an. Uh, now. Go to Northwestern Jingji. Pick up a whole bunch of medicine. It's temples again. Well, in that case, go to the west, northwestern Chang'an. And to... Oh, I don't know. Drop off three there no two we don't satiate the market but go back to northwestern Jingji on an ox cart pick up a whole bunch more medicine and take some to Ling Zhao Zhou Ling Zhou I, I know how to pronounce And leave with four medicine turned back into a wheel dray. Then go to the other ones. GH1. And uh, Zhou. Now that should be quite profitable for a short route of, I was going to say relatively low value, but medicine is not relatively low value at all. Don't forget to put soldiers on. And Trang Tzu gets military kickbacks to sell all that medicine. Because medicine is, in a, in a sense, a weapon of war. Uh, off, off you trots. Now. Did I... When I did Lacquer Local, put troops on it? Yes. That's all right then. Right, that's everything I can do then. I say we just sit back and enjoy the ride. That's nice. Like it's midway through his first thing and with lack of local he's already paid for himself. I don't know how sustainable that is. Like I say, it's only two demand but lack of wear is not overly expensive. Or shouldn't be. Very good. Animal husbandry, of course, to make the 
make everything go quicker. Oh, that looks nice. Just all these people wandering around. What's he doing? Selling grapes. It looks like they're still struggling for cotton cloth, but I am not wasting any time fixing your issues. What are you doing? Yeah. Selling golden ruby that you're just not interested in. Still, I need to sell it to you for the points. Religious reforms in Parthia prevents any purchases of local religious buildings. Haven't we already had that one in Parthia? Uh, come on, people. I'm trying to make a profit here. Hmm, that's not bad. Who's the one that uh, has just got started on the cinnamon local? Well, cinnamon medicine local. Yeah, seems to be doing a fine old job. They really like cinnamon. He's got plenty of cinnamon. Everybody's happy. Really, yeah. Really is as well. He's made a thousand already and he's only just started. Oh, perhaps we should have got started on that a bit earlier. It's easy money. Rather than traversing all the way across the Silk Road. Which I know is what the mission wants you to do and rewards you for it. But, uh... There's no point traipsing all the way across. Oh, thank God for that. Iconoclasm didn't last long. I say you don't get points for... You don't get extra money for traversing a long way. All it tends to ensure is that demand is high because of the amount of time it takes. But if you can supply locally, do. What's happening here? You're trying to sell silk. You're trying to... Oh, come on, people. The silks come all the way from China. Try to look a bit more enthusiastic. I say that I haven't, uh, I haven't got any silk, anything. I don't think. No, no, nothing like that. Not even. No, I'll go to silk. Um, you'd have to go for the real deal, not this synthetic silk. I might get some silk pyjamas, perhaps, but uh, no, nothing like that for me. Or like a, a silk komodo instead of the dressing gown that I've got. <laughs> it did look pretty cool, but um, it made me look more eccentric than I already am. Right, are lamps a military weapon? No. I am disappointed in AG. I said that they are trying to sell, trying to sell amethysts for double the price. We need some rubies. I mean, that's the downside, I guess, of, of supplying local markets, especially with very expensive goods, is the demand just doesn't build up quick enough. Is anybody else struggling? No, you're certainly not. You have, you have got a long journey ahead. You've got to go all the way to China. What are you doing? You're waiting to buy medicine. Why was there not some already waiting for you? Nice, create some demand. Very nice. Is medicine a foodstuff? No, unfortunately. Huswang Tsung. I wouldn't say export. If I'm not careful, this place is going to be flooded full of, uh... Oh, wow, well, you should never have stopped working. There's all these people waiting for medicine, and you've just been sat on your, um... posterior. Oh, no, I'm not working. I've got to wait for the price of drugs to go down. Don't give me that. Hmm, 
Why is he on a an ox cart on the way back? That seems quite inefficient. Wang Mang, what's he what's he doing? I don't know he's gone. You Oh you're on the lamps route. You're quietly making a bit of profit, no muss, no fuss. Do dwellings demand medicine? No. Plebs can't afford that. Branches of knowledge for ten thousand coins. Provides a library and a school. Hmm. If you're not concerned with the location of schools and libraries, you should probably allow one of your opponents to purchase it. For. No, I've got the money. I don't think it does absolutely anything for us. What do schools want? Library wants brass lamps, so that was a waste of time. And schools want brass lamps, so that was a waste of time. Oh well. And I don't want to particularly take... Um, put them in the towns themselves because brass lamps are already at a premium and all I would do is chase out the population what are you trying to do? you're trying to sell cotton cloth hmm, it's funny I thought we were um, facing a, a, a shortage of that ok let's take a look at oh, some random part of the uh, so let's say path here. What's going on here? Ah, what are you doing? You're selling ivory? You've sold ivory? Nice. And I think your route, you then go to pick up marble, don't you? Yes, you do. Nice. That's the beauty of... Uh, Two-way trade, and it took me so long when playing this game to fully appreciate that. Like I say, I think I've mentioned in comments and such like, I have had this game for so long. Um, probably had it the year it came out, which is what, 2001? And as a child, new adolescent, I never played past the first few scenarios. I never really played them properly. So I'm kind of like... Ooh, very nice. Famine of jewellery, yeah. We're kind of like developing this... We're, we're learning this game together. Because uh, we're, we're on a journey together. Although I, I'm perhaps on a scouting expedition. Do I, I do look a little bit ahead to the next scenario, just so I'm not playing completely blind. Because although that works with some people, and uh, you get the, like, the, the reaction shots, and you go, Oh, I didn't expect that. It, uh, it just doesn't work with some games. I don't think it's worked very well with this one. Um, have an honest reputation. And it's like, I've learnt quite a bit of this about this game. Particularly like setting up sea routes, about yeah, the, the benefits of canals, um, setting up two-way trading to make it more efficient, making better use of your merchants. These are things that I never thought about when I was playing this as a, as a child. I would have been about 12 when I got the game. and uh, But the true love of this game only really took off when it became unavailable kind of thing. You don't, um, what's that? You don't miss a thing until it's gone. Um, as soon as you start to getting, getting into Windows 8 and 8.1 and then to Windows 10, uh, particularly with the thing with the Securom, which means that a lot of games don't work unless you can disable the security check on them. Like this game and Rome Total War, because Secur Securum is apparently a security threat according to Microsoft, so they deliberately stop it running, which is why a lot of your old games just don't start. You, you click on them, uh, you say trouble, um, it looks like it starts, and then it cuts out, and it says, would you like to run the troubleshooter? It's Microsoft themselves are doing that, blocking it, if it's doing a Securum secu security check. But it wasn't until that happened, and there's a few times when you put the game in and had problems with it running because of the graphics card and then suddenly you go oh I miss this game now I wish I'd played it more when I had the chance and it worked so 
Now I am playing the game more because I've had the chance and it works. But I say to a level that I never played as a kid. And I find that a lot with the games. I know that Rise of Nations is one I still play. And play to a level that I never played when it came out. Again, was that 2003? Um, Pharaoh's another one. I play that to a level I never played before. Uh, I've certainly gone further. I think the furthest I've got was when I played it offline back when I was at university. And that was about 10 years ago. But I wasn't, I didn't record that at the time. I think about halfway through, perhaps the Middle Kingdom. But as a child, I, I, tend, I tended not to get much further than the old, well, middle of the Old Kingdom, I'd say. I got through the Archaic period because that is, uh, well, that's that basically a tutorial, isn't it? Well, have you got Newt, which is basically build some, build some huts, build a farm, no, build a hunting lodge, then Thinis, that's teaching you about entertainment and gold mining. Pawajit, that's teaching you about farming. And then, that's Menefer. I don't know. But it's like each one of those is a tutorial mission where new new concepts are brought in. It's a very good um, tutorial, actually, because it, it doesn't feel too hand-holdy, you know? Yeah, right. Oh, it says an arsenal that doesn't doesn't buy weapons. Okay. Uh, what about fortress castle? I can't help but feel there's uh, something missing in this game. <laughs> I don't know if the, the, the level designers missed it off by accident. You got all these things that indicate that weapons should be sold. You start with barracks from early on. And you've got arsenals, stables, castles, fortresses, and uh, none of them. None of them. <laughs> There's no weapons to sell there. Perhaps they're all red herrings that are supposed to waste your money. But, all for you game, I've got more money than cents. Um, I've, got, I've got less than 553,000 cents. Um, and it doesn't affect your wealth, because wealth includes technologies purchased. So I'm not losing any score by buying these up. I just don't think so anyway. You're probably going to do marketeering after a while because I've probably overdone it with the medicine and the cinnamon. Well, you say that, these people are desperate for the stuff. And there was me traipsing across the world trying to sell it. Just sell it locally. Also, you need to start producing. Ah. So good. I wouldn't say stop. Good lord. Hmm, actually, maybe you should stop. Or I might just build a second one. So that when demand does come, you'll get through them twice as quickly. I don't know quite what to look at. It's quite nice. I, I feel like this is like a nice, nice holiday video. It's like it's the end of term. It's it's Christmas holidays coming up. The teachers brought in uh, a crossword and a word search, and there's no learning to be done. But apart from if you get some real stickler of teacher, which I know that I probably would be if I was a teacher. It's like you come here to learn, and uh, although it's the last day of term, that doesn't mean it's the end of term. <laughs> Uh, we, uh, yeah, it used to be some really boring, yeah, some boring old teacher. Be like, no, the Christmas, the Christmas holidays don't start till half past three on Friday. <laughs> to that end, get your textbooks out. I mean, granted, he's right. But uh, you probably don't appreciate the finer points of it when you're, you're a kid at school. What are you doing? Oh, no, the cinnamon's becoming overloaded with cinnamon. Who would have seen this happening? I'd still like to fix it now. I've done it like a hundred years left and I've got, I've got wads of cash. Hmm. Good stuff. 
Are you making much money? Yes. Who's doing well, actually? Chang Chien is making 51,000 from doing the actual Silk Road. It seems quite fitting that they he should be one of the highest earners. There's also Lotsu, who's just doing a bit of trading fur. Interesting. Nice leadership because you're probably going to get into quite a few fights. That is the that's the most valuable trait when it comes to border crossing because you don't you don't particularly want to flee. You want to fight them and win so you get the money that they're covering. Lack of local marketeering, I think. Well, I've got a funny feeling that demand's going to be a bit satiated. Thirty-eight thousand for wine. Again, don't don't, don't, neg don't neglect your um, your local routes. That's just a steady income throughout the game, that is. Fur Palace Antioch. Mm, it makes sense. Like I said, that would be more profitable, but it's just a distance involved. Antioch Glass China. Disappointing, probably because lacquerware and glass are mid-level. They're not great earners, and you have to travel a long way to sell them. Um, who else is a high earner? Tarim Export. Food. <laughs> Never again will I, uh, like, will I poo-poo the idea of, like, food production. I'm trading in food. It's... I was going to say it's cheap stuff, but figs aren't particularly cheap. What's that? 160. Grapes, 120. Wheat is. So as long as you don't focus on... Like, some food looks like it's pretty expensive. Huh. Antioch Glass China. Why? I knew I'd forgotten to put guards on the route. Oh uh, well. Right, who was it? Lipo. Let's get you guarded up and I'll send you on your way. You've got a long journey ahead before you start making a profit again. Oh, and it was just starting to make a profit as well. Ooh. Advanced time making. Now that's odd. This looks like. Uh, oh, I haven't got to deal with cotton cloths. But that's odd because in the Phoenician scenario, advanced die making gave us glass of colour, and it was regular die making that gave us cloth, dyed cloth. So again, I don't know if they made a mistake there somehow. But it looks like I've got to do. Some jimmy, shimmying up of the roots. With a hundred years to go. Come on, game. Don't do this to me. Horse at leadership. That makes sense. I need you to hurry up. I remember you're doing Antioch Glass Palace. Was it Antioch Glass China or Antioch Glass Local? I can't remember. I remember the Antioch glass part, but I can't remember if it was local or not. And I can't find it on here. This is just the kind of... Uh, this is just the kind of, like, thrilling, edgy-seat gameplay that I know you tune in for. Antioch. Glass local. Ah. Off you trot. Now. If we go to the Tarim Basin, are there dyes? No. No. 
Hmm, okay. Where are the dies? I don't know. Also, that looks pretty built up. I quite like how busy that map is. Well, where on earth are the nearest dies? Oh, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> I've got to, I've got to uh, take dies from all the way to An from Antioch to the Turin Basin to turn them into dyed cloth so that my people can, the ple plebs can be happy. Ooh. It's not even a luxury, so it doesn't count for points. Hmm. All right. All right. So, I need you to go to Antioch. Is there really not a better way? The answer's no. Just gotta, just gotta make sure. Nope, no dies there. No dies here. No dies here. No dice here. Oh, that's that's mean game. That is very mean. Okay, so we start at northwestern Hierapolis. Now I don't know whether to get an ox cart and carry six because it'll take so long on an ox cart that it's probably worth just going straight for the wheel dray. Go to... Well, I don't know. Yeah, forget these. Oh, I know. They were, they were where you're supposed to be trading them. Still, forget them. Just give an opportunity to bring some more stuff to Antioch, but I don't... I don't think anybody particularly needs anything, do they? Uh, no. Nothing that uh, China produces. Could perhaps bring some medicine back. Looks like uh, Antioch wouldn't mind a bit of medicine. A bit of medicine down in Eastern AG. Having said that... Again with the silk cloth. That's being brought all the way from China and a bunch of ingrates. Right, go all the way back to Turin Basin. Go to Nia. Four dyed wool cloth. Go all the way to Chanang. of Nanding, Western Gwening, and the other Gwening. Or Gwenai. I ought to, to put in the description of this video, these videos, uh, Englishman mispronounces foreign names. So it seems to be an awful large, uh, awful large portion of the video. Now, now who gets the lion's share of cotton cloth? Because somebody's got to. 16, 18, 18. It was a draw. Well, we'll say Southern Anding because 
I'm just that kind of guy. Arbitrary. Okay. Well, we've got to go back this way anyway, and we've got to carry something. So we may as well take some medicine back with us. I don't want to. It seems like a waste to me. I'd have those people where I know where um, cloth that isn't dyed. Just, just don't. Just <laughs> Rather than going naked and like getting dying from exposure, because I couldn't possibly wear cloth that isn't dyed. Now that I've heard of dyed, dyed clothes. Um, if it's up to me, I, I would just let them. I'd let them. And perish, but I spent a bit, uh, quite a bit of time making that those places nice. So go to Antioch and so one to Antioch, one to AG, and one to Eastern AG. And don't forget your soldiers. See, look at that medicine demand. It's not, it's not overwhelming, is it? Also, that's because there's only one temple there. The AG with the medicines. What's it? What's demand like in Eastern AG for medicines? It's the same as everywhere else. Because, well, slightly higher, but, but the palace doesn't really demand medicine. Still, I've got to sell it, and sell it I shall. Right, who are those two people that were on the route? Right, off you go, cloth one. Feel free to drop everything you've got. That looked like it was going to be quite profitable, never mind. And who else was there? And then forget about it. I, uh, I, I just don't care. That's <laughs> it's, I, uh, and this, this, this close to the end of the game. I've got a lot of money in my, in my, in my pocket. It's a non-luxury good. It's for the paupers. I'm not interested. And um, it's really inconvenient to provide for. I don't know how else you're supposed to do that. That, that must be the only way. I mean, they would surely die in China. Oh well, that's, uh, that's all right. Well, what do we do now? Uh, wait, I guess, about 100 years. No, 70 years to go. Let's just check, see if everybody's doing all right. Oh dear. Definitely overdone it on the cinnamon. Definitely overdone it on the cinnamon. Having said that, the cloth route no longer provides cinnamon, so that should help ease things a bit. Still, it's too late for me to do anything about it. Ooh, I think I'll follow you for a bit. Get off. I don't even know what route you were on. Nice, local glass. Just, uh, just keep selling it. Uh-oh. What is it with these people being satiated and not, not wanting to pay over the odds for luxury goods? It's these local routes again. demand like in Jingji. Satiated. We'll do all right with amethysts, but not with ruby. 
Oh, that's a shame. It's the um, the patrician classes are letting me down now. Hmm. Lots of colour cells for a good price. There are plenty of fur coats there if the people in Jingji don't want them. Well, perhaps we ought to look at this. Where's he going there now? Yeah, I've got to look at this. Fur coats this, fur coats that. Yeah, if you people don't want... Uh, if, you, if the palaces don't want fur coats, then uh, maybe I'll give them to the temples. Give them. <laughs> I'll sell them to the temples. Whew. Well, what was I thinking? So Su Suzhou's fine, because you've got one of both. Cheng Ye, no. We will go to Ji Huan. Or Jia Huan. Um, Jin Ji, no. We will go to Ling, Ling Xiao. Liang Zhou, isn't it? These people want fur coats and will pay good money for them. And Western Chinang, no. We'll go to uh, Northwestern Chang. There we go. Rather than trying to try to uh, pay a little bit over the odds, when these people are willing to pay well over the odds. Okay, who else? Oh, you're just uh, you're just quietly doing your own thing, making lots of money with. The bronze mirrors, you're struggling with that. Hmm, somehow I managed to sell the ruby. You're struggling to sell... Again, struggling to sell the um, amethysts. And these people are supposed to be all over the amethysts. I mean... It's a, it's a third more. It's not, it's not great. And now you're going to Hectomphilos. Now they should be fine because you've got temples there as well. Yeah. Well, having said that, it's not overwhelming demand. Oh, that's plenty of overwhelming demand for everything else. Though. If I was set up here as the uh, Pasargadai family or whatever, I'd be doing all right, but having said that, I would also have probably satiated all this demand right now, just like I have done in Chanang. In fact, it's probably quite tough to take the Han route, because um, you're at one end of the of the route. Everybody else is somewhere in the middle, so they set up, and there's only. So say you're in start with Samarkand, you know, you've got Antioch that's two squares away and Chang that's three squares away. So you've never got particularly far to go to satiate all of these needs. Whereas if you're in Chang, you've got two this way, nothing this way. So slight disadvantage, particularly in terms of Oh. Thank you. Um initially setting up the route. Once the route's already been established. It's uh, not too much of a problem. But it's like getting from your HQ to then setting up a route. And until I figured out that little trick with the... Uh, oh, wow. Setting up a, a mini route for them to pick up guards. It was a quite j dangerous journey. Particularly if starting off in Chang'an, Chang going to Antioch, crossing five dangerous borders to get there unarmed, hoping for the best. Why are you? Oh, you're, you've, you've travelled all that way from the cloth route <laughs> on the Nox cart. Well done, you. What are you doing? Frank T is also on the cloth route. Oh, Tarin Basin no longer suffers from plague. I didn't even notice it was suffering from plague. What's going on here? Iconoclasm in... 
Jade gates. That's pretty bad because we just told everybody to sell fur coats to the temples. Huh. Oh, you're going a you're going a very tortuous route. Antioch Ivory Export Path. This is an export. They produce marble. Oh no, they, they produce marble in Parthia and bring it back to Antioch, even though Antioch produces its own. What's the demand like for marble? That's yeah, alright. Stable. And Eastern AG. It's alright. Stable. Well, marketing's probably a good shout. An Emporium. Yes. I don't know if I'm going to use that or not. Let's go to Chanang. See if we can't make... Um, price gouging, please. Well, let's make you into a bazaar. That's nice. I don't think it does much for anybody, but... Uh, I've got the funds, I may as well use them. That's nice. I'm not quite sure when you would use an Emporium. Presumably by the time you get to that stage in the game when it's available. What well, could make it into an Emporium when they could supply, supply their own vineyards? But then that's... Part of the business shut down then, so... Less of that. I think of some scenarios you can, you can start with Emporium straight off the bat. And I guess it might be pretty useful just so you don't have to have so many markets to worry about. I could set up like an Emporium here. Which would just pick up... What's this? Cinnamon, wine, well, grapes, wheat, more grapes, um, in lacquer, grape maker... Like, everything could just take place in this single market. But where's the fun in that? And also, where's the profit in that? The profit comes from taking things from one place to another. So it's better to have lots of small markets. Even if it's a pain to set up the trade routes and a pain to watch somebody set up the trade routes. But, uh... What's, uh, what's Tai Tsung doing? Also, note, um, there are 37 years left and still no sign of any weapons. <laughs> this, uh... This was definitely designed by two people who didn't talk to each other. I mean, look at this. They're just quietly going about 10,000 profit there. They've yet... They've, they've never made a profit. I mean, yeah. Wasn't it? Plus was right about that. There's no great savings to be made from actually purchasing somewhere. Apart from if it's in a place where you have to bring the raw materials in. I think. They always seem to do quite well. But as I say, these places are doing dreadfully. the merchant limit becomes a little bit irritating. So I'd be like, well I'd set up a coloured glass route to go to all these temples and places. Uh, I, mean, I guess I could take some merchants off the less profitable routes, but they're all pretty profitable. I'm uh, quite proud of my uh, my routes. <laughs> it's go I'm going to keep going back to them, going back to my routes. What are you doing? You're selling... Ivory statuettes. Do the people of Eastern AG want ivory statuettes? Eh, we can take them or leave them. I say take them or leave them, we've got double demand there and we'll pay double price and there's me going, eh, looks a bit flat. Hands off. There we are. My ruby, uh, ruby rings. I mean, maybe I could have set up a brass lamp route, but 
It's taken all game to get to that level of demand and that price. And it only takes a couple of journeys to completely satiate it, and the price collapses, and then you're stuck. Hmm, perhaps you should have brought some golden ruby back. Hmm. It might have been worthwhile if I was to have my time again to set up a Samarkand Antioch route. So Samarkand could bring the rubies and on the way back from Antioch bring back, I don't know, ivory statues and incense. You know, that kind of thing. Well, the demand here is pretty satiated for rubies, as well it should be, because they produce them locally. So yeah, what I perhaps would do was look at the trade routes in terms of import-export from region to region. Oh, follow the Han Dynasty. Inter-regional clashes in Chang'an have taken their toll on local populations. I don't like the sound of that. Ah, seems fine. Wait, follow the Han Dynasty? One, two, two, one. Mm. Well, I guess they were here at the start of the game, which was 300 BC. I guess uh, 500 years is not a bad, not bad innings for a uh, for a dynasty. A Jin dynasty only lasted a single lifetime. It, it collapsed pretty quickly after Qi Huang Di. I mean, it was a, it was a good dynasty. It got a lot of stuff done, it unified China into the state we know today. But it was all done in a single lifetime. She has a bit of a failure of succession there. And again, it was, it was a pretty brutal... Uh, it was a like, rule with an iron fist, um, Chief Hunt leader. Got stuff done, but was a bit too harsh in the methods. But then again, the Han Dynasty, although they had this... Um, Spin of being a bit of a rel relaxation, and thank God the Chin Dynasty is over with their uh, with their uh, harsh rules and rule by iron fist. Didn't actually do a great deal to alleviate the powers that had been the centralized centralization centralizing powers that the um, Chin Dynasty had set up. Um, so they just they, they benefited from it and didn't relinquish any of the control. It was like, well, we're not going to be so harsh now. Perhaps they did, they did some token reforms and say, look how liberal everything is now and uh, how free we all are, and I'd say nothing, nothing particularly changed. Uh, where, where are you going? Fur, China Palace, yeah you're making a bit more profit now, we're selling to the temples. Do that for a bit until the temples get satiated and then switch back to the palaces, by which time they should have realised their mistake. Hmm, hmm. What are you trying to sell? The swang, swang. Mm, medicine. Come on, these people should be uh, desperate for this stuff. Also, oh look at that price of coloured glass there. Almost a million in the bank. I feel like score-wise we should be doing pretty well. I'm a captain of industry. Ooh, I need another 300,000 to make it to uh, Merchant Prince. I don't think I'm going to get it. What are we on? I've got another, ooh, no, 20 years to make 300,000. Doesn't look likely, does it? What are you doing? There's marketeering. You won't need it because those people are desperate for the stuff. Oh, there's a price of coloured glass there, it's only 700. I could sell it in Jinja, uh, Suzhou for f double that. Oh. That's the trouble with selling locally. See, there's so many things I feel like I want to do. There's like, there's bits of brass I can do here, and there's, uh, as I say, I can spread coloured glass out a long way. A glass of colour will out a long way. There's, there's routes all along the Silk Road that will 
I started crying out for a glass of colour, and I can't, because I've not got any merchants left. I mean, maybe when you play against um, rival families, they kind of, that's why there's so much, so many resources, because they get snapped up by various families, theoretically. I don't think it quite works like that, but that's definitely the theory behind it. The, um, the families themselves just sort of do a herp uh, let's all follow each other and go to the same single market with a single woodcutter camp there and then there's a suddenly demand for 20 pieces of wood. <laughs> um, I think that's how it works in practice, but in theory that's supposed to be how it works. Hmm, where's all the merchants here? Going to Suzhou. What's the demand like for fur in Suzhou? Satiated. Look at this. There's a palace and a temple, and they're both like. No. Nah. There's only so much fur one one person can wear. And I'd be there saying, "Well, no, but it's a new it's a new season." I wonder what kind of fur it is. It's uh, like um, marmoset fur or. Uh, Meerkat fur, or what else? What else do you find in the Gobi Desert? Do you find meerkats in the Gobi Desert? We say you find them on the Russian steppes. Uh, bear, you get Gobi bears, don't you? Of course. Well, that's always in fashion. The trouble is, you then got to try and catch and skin the bear. I mean, he's managed it, but uh, he didn't get a good price for that glass. Like what's happening in Chanang? See, I'm seeing some merchants walking up across the uh, the road, but there's not there's not a great deal. It doesn't feel very populated, this Silk Road. Again, maybe it would do if there was four families and they're all going up and down and up and down, but, you know. I get it, I'm a wuss. <laughs> I say that, but there is the occasional merchant doing their thing. Seems to make sense. And in Parthia, there we go, there's another one. There's someone else. I was being a bit harsh on myself there. There's loads of merchants traipsing up and down the Silk Road. And will just take us through to Antioch. Again, it seems a bit quiet again, doesn't it? We're all stuck in markets, I guess. AG has just been a disappointment, what can I say? And uh, speaking of disappointments, I think we're in for one. This is the uh, first video in a while where I've not made Merchant Prince. I'll be a, a mere captain of industry. And uh, what's more, oh no, I'm a notable tycoon. I'll take that. Sounds all right. Uh, tycoon sounds better than uh, Captain of Industry anyway. So that's me. I've uh, beaten the missing link, who was only an apprentice merchant, wasn't even trying. Uh, I don't know who Icom is, but he did a good job. Um, he also started from the Han family. The missing link started as a Fergana family, so had the, adv had the advantage of being in the middle of everything. And look at this, wasn't even trying. I, d I wonder if these are the scores of the actual game devs who played the game to get the scores on there. It's like they produce the game, and before it ships, I don't know, run through it a couple of times just to see how it is. So, happy with that. And, uh, continue game for a little bit. Let's take a little look at everything. Quite impressed. In case you come across this, before Eastern AG and AG tend to always spawn temples up here, palaces up here. Um, Antioch, not bad. I don't know what you're supposed to do with fortresses. <laughs> it really does seem like, doesn't it? Like, one developer thought this this scenario is going to feature military weapons, and another person, another developer thought, no, nah, this one's a peaceful one with no military weapons. Or they set it all up, and somebody realised, oh, hold on a second, weapons makes this too easy, too profitable, so they just cut it out. 
and but left all the events and the merchant traits and the um, demand things there. I mean, it's not a bad thing. I guess it means that Antioch has always got demand for silk. But then again, temples don't demand silk. So what am I talking about? Um, what's there to say about Parthia? Uh, Parthia, Persia, Zagros, never changes. It's just uh, mountains and deserts. There's the mountains, there's the deserts. Not a bad place. I felt I could have done perhaps a little bit more with Hectomphalos. But then again, do I really want to carry cinnamon across three boundaries when I could just sell it locally? No. It's all right. Uh, some Arcans. That had a potential to go somewhere. Um, a reasonable job of setting it up. Rubies. I feel like I managed to satiate a lot of the demand for rubies. I think it's the only place that produces rubies. No, the Tarim Basin also does it. The Tarim Basin, there's very little to say about this. Desert. It's the Gobi Desert. What do you want, what do you want from it, really? You get your cotton from there. Huh, that's odd. There's a mountain there. It even looks a bit sparse, doesn't it? There's only one palace, and uh, but two temples. I think it's the only place where there's only one palace. The Jade Gates? I'm not quite sure where this is. Maybe... Is this like the Himalayas? Are we getting close to Tibet here? Well, let's see. Yeah, looks like it, doesn't it? There's, there's Tibet. And then Chanang. Which I, to the to the very end of this episode, I've steadfastly refused to learn how to pronounce it properly. Uh, you'll be moving the G from here to there. Oh well, I I like how crowded this looks. But then again, when you've got this much mountain taking up half the map, it's bound to look a bit crowded. But I like this. Um, like we've got three cities, and they they must have made me hundreds of thousands. Well, the food that's food alone made me. How much did the food make me? Mm, was it Shen Nung that was on that? Food 2, 56,000. Food 1, 37,000. So that's not too bad. That's not too shabby. It's one of the highest earners. And, and yet, I'm one to never particularly... I, t I tend to uh, scoff at trading of food. But at the beginning of the game, it's a nice, steady income. Not to be sniffed at. But, sniff I do. Anyway, that's, uh, I think that's, I think, is about everything. I think we're just stalling for time now. And uh, with that, slightly disappointing finish, but, you know, notable tycoon. Not a bad, uh, not a bad score. Almost made a million up in the top corner. I'm, I'm pointing with my finger then. Uh, I thought that was a good idea. Hope you enjoyed. I, I quite enjoyed this scenario. The lack of ships and the sheer number of markets you have to deal with was a little bit grating. And the sheer number of crossings made it a little bit confusing. I, I quite liked... I liked the concept of it more than the actual application. But that's it. Quite a good one. Quite a fun one. Um, I think the second episode, that, the second part of this episode was a little bit dry and I have to apologise for that. Um, there's only so much you can say about making the umpteenth trade route, but uh, sometimes it just needed to be done. And uh, I, I think I managed to keep the commentary a little bit okay. It's not, not the best. There was quite a bit of that old, um, go to here, pick up this, go to here, drop this, pick up here, you know. But I guess it can't be helped to a certain extent. Um, but with that, let me know what you think in the comments. Did you enjoy this episode? Uh, would you would you have me play it again? If so, why? <laughs> and uh, feel free to like and um, subscribe. Always nice to get a few subscribers. I'm actually now at a point where we've got the most subscribers I've ever had. This channel's ever had at 183. <laughs> but uh, when you think that some people have got millions, but you know. Who would want millions when I... It's all about quality, not quantity. And you are a high quality bunch. Because you, you keep coming back and watching. And that, that counts for a lot. And I do appreciate it. And um, feel free to share this video. Not particularly this one. Because it would be a strange thing to share the part three of a three part series. But certainly feel free to share whatever. I, as I understand it, my theme hospital videos 
are still going strong. They're about three years old and people still watch them on a regular basis. Even though Two Point Hospital has since come out and uh, superseded it. I might do a Two Point Hospital run, but I'm not promising anything because there's like a list of things I need to do just as long as my arm. Including the next episode, which is... I don't know. How do we get out of here? I don't know. No, it's um, Byzantium and Islam. So, we'll be trading round about this region again, which is a far more common a location to have a campaign than bloody China, the person who edited that Wikipedia article. Uh, I'm not the type to edit Wikipedia articles. I've got things to do in my life. But if any of you fancy updating that Wikipedia article so it's actually useful, conducive to what so the Silk well, what um, the Silk Road uh, Trade Empires is actually about, I think many of us would be grateful. I know I would be. Anyway, with that I will see you in the next episode. This is Islam and Byzantium. And I will see you later. Thank you very much for watching.